Gather around, children. It's story time with Professor Lanterman. Today, I'll be reading from The Art of Electronics by Horowitz and Hell, the best book on electronics ever written. Let's start on page 79. The important changes in property four, where we said earlier that I see the current through the collector of the bipolar junction transistor is equal to HFE times IB, the current through the base. HFE is what's generally called beta. We thought of the transistor as a current amplifier whose input current behaved like a diode. That's roughly correct, and for some applications, it's good enough. But to understand differential amplifiers, logarithmic converters, temperature compensation, and other important applications, you must think of the transistor as a transconductance device. Collector current is determined by the base to emitter voltage. Voltage. Here's the modified property four. So here they give the Ebers mole equation, the simplified version of it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then the base current, which also depends on VBE, can be approximated by, and then it gives this equation with the beta relationship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The equation for IC is known as the ebers mole equation. It also approximately describes the current versus voltage for a diode, et cetera, et cetera. For transistors, it is important to realize that the collector current is accurately determined by the base emitter voltage rather than the base current. The base current is then roughly determined by HFE, aka beta, and that the exponential law is accurate over an enormous range of currents, typically from nanoamps to milliamps. All right, so let's look at this graph here. All right, so the vertical axis here is on a logarithmic scale. So here we have the base emitter voltage. Here we have the collector current. And look at what a gloriously linear line this is. See how, see how nice that line is? Now, if we plot the base current here, you know, theoretically, if this is really just differ by a multiplicity factor, this should also be a straight line. But it's not. It kind of moves around a bit. This HFE, this thing that corresponds to beta, this itself is actually a function of the collector current. So there's kind of really a parentheses I see here. HFE, this beta thing, typically is in the range of 20 to 1,000, but depends on transistor type. Well, fine. The collector current, the collector emitter voltage, and temperature. So this beta here, this HFE, this is a slippery parameter. And this is a slippery relationship. Okay, so why am I banging on about this? I made a video called They Misled You About MOSFETs. And in that video, I said that tubes are controlled by the grid to cathode voltage and that assuming you can hook the bulk to the source, MOSFETs are controlled by the gate source voltage and BJTs are controlled by the base emitter voltage. I should have seen it coming. I got a ton of comments from people saying, well, actually, BJTs are current-controlled current sources, not voltage-controlled. And technically speaking, it's not incorrect to think of a BJT as a current-controlled current source. It's not helpful. It's much more fundamentally a voltage-controlled device. So let's consider the humble resistor. Nothing terribly fancy. I can write this as a controlled source. I could write it as a voltage source where the voltage is equal to a particular current in the circuit times the resistance, where according to my usual convention associated with passive elements, the current's going this direction. So that's the current I. Or I could write this as a current source like such, and I could say, okay, well, what's the current here? Well, that's going to equal to V divided by R, where I'm measuring this voltage V across here like thus. Now, you're used to your controlled sources using a variable elsewhere in the circuit, but 
There's nothing that says I have to do that. And these are both absolutely equivalent descriptions as our usual resistor. In fact, you could build up a whole circuit theory without ever talking about resistors. Instead of calling this resistance, you could call it the pirate variable or something. I mean, that would be a crime against humanity, but you could do it. Now, here's a question. Which of these is right? Well, they're equivalent. You need to step away from thinking about Ohm's law as a cause and effect or the other kinds of equations that describe circuit elements in terms of cause and effect, and think about those equations as defining constraints on the circuit variables that combine with the constraints on the circuit variables defined by other equations associated with other circuit elements that are combined according to Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, which of these is more natural to use? Well, that depends on what you're driving this resistor with. If you hook it up to a voltage source, which is kind of the way we're used to thinking about resistors, then this version here is more natural. You think about the resistor as a voltage-controlled current source. But on the other hand, you can think about driving the resistor with a current source, say the load resistor in a BJT amplifier where you've hooked the resistor to the collector. Well, in that case, it's more natural to think about the resistor as a current-controlled voltage source. Okay, so if you had a BJT sitting here, let me draw your bog-standard MPN transistor, and you were to actually drive this with some sort of current source, okay, well, then the current-controlled current source model would be fairly natural. But you're generally not driving the base with some sort of current source. You're generally driving it with a voltage signal. My colleague Marshall Leach taught Georgia Tech's EC3050 analog electronics for many, many years. And all of his notes are available online. And I would strongly suggest that you check out his notes on the BJT. Mainly, you don't really need to stress out about this exponential. Remember, you're going to linearize this around some DC operating point to have a small signal model. And the fact that you get a big change in current for a small change in voltage, that's a good thing. That's how you get gain. So if you use that transconductance model, you can play all sorts of neat games. So what Marshall does is he creates a set of Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits that you see looking into the various terminals of the small signal model of the BJT in terms of the Thevenin equivalent circuits seen looking out of the other terminals. And that's specified in terms of voltages. And taking that viewpoint, something really cool happens. If you take his formula sheet for the BJT and you substitute certain quantities and you basically let beta go to infinity and the input impedance looking into the base R pi go to infinity, then you wind up with formulas that are exactly equivalent to the formulas that show up on his MOSFET sheet. Remember that you really don't want your designs to have to depend on beta. Beta is not a reliable parameter. So you usually have some kind of feedback mechanism to keep that under control. Now, if you have a very good transistor, then you can set the voltage gain of something like a common emitter amplifier just using the resistors. And what's a very good transistor? It's one with a really high beta. You can think about BJTs as voltage control devices that happen to have something like a parasitic current flowing through the base that you have to deal with as a designer, but it's just a thing that BJTs do. You can think about the voltage between the base and the emitter controlling the collector current. It also controls the base current, and then your emitter current is the sum of those. And really, you should welcome the exponential basis of the BJT, because that's how you get fuzz effects. And I know you like fuzz. If you've used a compressor by DBX or a compressor by Solid State Logic, you've used a voltage control circuit by David Blackmer that fundamentally relies on the exponential nature between the collector current and the base to emitter voltage of BJTs. I have a lecture in my ECE4450 Analog Circuits for Music Synthesis class 
that talks about different techniques to deal with the temperature variation of the Ebers mole equation to create exponential voltage to current sources to drive things like voltage controlled oscillators. Well, in this context, it's really a current controlled oscillator and technically current controlled filters, but you hook something like this to them to make them voltage controlled filters. Anyway. If you would like to explore these ideas further, I would invite you to check out the lectures in my EC3400 playlist. 3400 is the new number of what was called 3050 when Marshall was teaching, and I teach this material using his techniques. So I start with BJTs on lecture 5, and then we derive the small signal models and the various Thevenin and Norton equivalents, and then build up the formulas for the various standard amplifiers and go from there. I also highly recommend checking out Marshall's website in general. He has material for five other classes in addition to that junior analog electronics class, and this is all an absolute gold mine of information.